only work with the permission of the community because they, as an ethical client, we, have, we can hurt them by uh, working with these remains. And what the uh, IRBs do, institutional review boards involving uh, human subjects, they require informed consent. So we engaged in meetings like this, talked about our ideas, the community, this is the descendant community, but they are empowered as an ethical client. We are obligated to them because of our professional ethics to do no harm and um, finding out their questions for our research. If they will let us, they have the, this is a clientage model because we don't work with them. We're not, ours was not these many models that have come up today of in which there are many different stakeholders and there may be cases in which that's important, particularly for a cemetery and perhaps beyond. This is about the plural democratization of knowledge in which everyone is not the same, in which I'm kind of thinking of Lonnie Guineer's tyranny of the majority. It is the family that buries its dead. It's the descendants that are the stewards of the dead. The neighbors should come. Hopefully the congregations will join. But who determines the disposition of the dead? It's not everyone in a, that kind, that kind of, there is a, there's a plural democracy embodied in this ethic. And so um, these were African Americans and other diasporic people. We have professional obligation. We're doing science and scholarship. The evidence isn't there. We're not going to say it. And then we have a business client who we are, we're also responsible to. So we, we began, we drew from the National Historic Preservation uh, Act the language in Section 106 that we entered into archaeological parlance of uh, the term descendant community for this clientage in which that community is empowered to say yes or no. In the end, they said yes to a project that they helped construct.